Welcome back for day two of my 31 days of Halloween series. My version of Frankenstein's monster was such a blast to create, and I hope you dig every inch of her. Product details and all that fun stuff will be in the video description below. Let's get started. I sketched out where I wanted to place every slab of character, so I could gauge how big of a portion I wanted for each one. I decided to begin with the eyes, and I knew immediately that I wanted that portion to be Bride of Frankenstein inspired. So I first concealed around my eyes and set it with powder. And then I decided to brow block the outer tail of my eyebrows to give that classic eyebrow she has. So I used a washable glue stick, applied that with a palette knife, used a little bit of water to smooth it out, waited till that dried, powdered it, color corrected, and then concealed. In between each layer of color corrector, I like to powder it to set it. This way, each layer doesn't get disturbed as I add on to it. And you can slowly watch your eyebrows disappear. Don't forget to set it with powder at the very end as well to make sure the products don't budge at all. To fill in my brows, I'm using a taupey brown color for the inner corner, and for the tail, I'm using black. I'm making my inner corners more pointy and pulling out my brow in a very dramatic way. Now feel free to laugh, I, uh, I ended up looking a little bit too Spock-like, so I decided to change that. So if you get a little too brow happy like me, you can use a little bit of concealer to clean that up. Wow, I really messed those up. To get a really crisp line of concealer, I like to just use a small lip pencil and just manipulate the brow to where you want it to lay. We are not doing Bride of Spock. Oh my God, it's so bad. The next step is to prime my eyelids and then go over that with a cream shadow to set it. Then I'm taking a taupe transition color and blending that into my crease making sure I extend the eyeshadow into more of a point on the outer corner. Then I'm taking an army green color and blending that into my crease before packing a very bright green onto my lid and then adding some more forest greens and a hint of black to the outer corner. Don't forget to add all these shadows on the bottom lid as well. And then you can go in with some white eyeshadow for highlight on the inner corner and under the brow. For eyeliner, I decided not to go too crazy dramatic with a cat eye, only a small wing just to extend the eye a little bit. Next, you can toss on some black mascara. As for lashes, I decided to go with the cult classic Demi Wispies by Ardell. The next section I'm going to work on is pinheads on my upper forehead. So I actually used a cream concealer to color in my very pale forehead. Since his skin is going to be sewed onto mine, you're going to want to make sure that there's a shadow casted over top of the Bride of Frankenstein's forehead. And then just taking some brown and taupe eyeshadows, I'm creating all of the divots in his forehead. As for the pins, I just used body paint. First went in with some white body paint to create the general shape. And then used grays and a little bit of eyeshadow for definition. Next, moving on to Jason. I knew I wanted Jason to be a big portion of my face because he's dope. So I took some cream body paint and painted on his portion. To dirty up his mask a little bit more, I took some brown body paint on a torn up cosmetic sponge and just dabbed that on. If this makes any sense, I knew I wanted the next portion to be <laughs> on top of his mask, so I made sure I casted the shadow onto his mask around the mouth area. Then taking some brown body paint, I'm creating all of the holes in his mask. 
and then also creating the red stripe on his face. For the highlights and the holes, you can use some tan body paint first and then some white on top. The next face I'm incorporating is one of my favorite horror characters, Twisty, from American Horror Story. First step is to take some tan body paint and paint the outer part of his mask. And then lighten up some black body paint with some gray to paint the inside. As for the teeth, you can just use some white body paint or white eyeliner and map those out before taking some dark red and painting the gum line. Next, you're gonna wanna go ham with the shading. Shade every inch of Twisty's mask. Anywhere where you want dimension, you're gonna wanna shade. So on the teeth, in the gum line, and then I'm taking a light cream body paint and painting my nose as well because he's got a whitish nose. Then I'm taking a very white cream concealer and applying that to the jigsaw portion of my cheek. Jigsaw's portion is by far the easiest one to do. Then you're gonna wanna take that berry red body paint again and paint on his swirl with a very thin detail brush. Now on to the neck. I decided I wanted to incorporate Dr. Frankenfurter, so I did his classic pearl necklace. You're just gonna paint circles around your neck with some white body paint. And then for the top part of his outfit that's gonna be peeking through, you can take some purple body paint and then speckle random dots on it so it looks like it's glittery. Don't forget to shade all around the pearls and his top as well. Next, moving on to the Sally shoulder, I decided to paint the purple panel first. To create some variation with the purple, I took an orchid body paint and blended that in before painting the rest of her panels a mustard yellow. Then I'm just adding a little bit of shading here and there before creating the very Tim Burton swirls on the purple portion and the wiggly stripes on the yellow. Sally also has some black stitches on her outfit, so I added those as well. For the other shoulder, I decided to incorporate the classic Freddy Krueger. His sweater is super simple. You're just gonna paint the red and olive green stripes before taking some black eyeshadow on a brush and stamping in all the little stitches in a brick pattern. Now to connect all these bad boys together, I'm first taking some white body paint to map out where I want the big stitches to be. I'm just adding those in places where I see fit. And then I decided I wanted them to be more like staples, more heavy duty. So I painted them all silver and then I added all the shading. Make sure you only shade the underbellies of all the staples and where they're going to dig in. And then you can take some white body paint and highlight the upper portion of them as well. And that's it. You've become a pretty wicked monster. See you guys tomorrow.